three ways that we learn. One is through listening to other people, reading what they have to say. The second is thinking things through, trying to find some pattern to what you've heard. Seeing where things fit together, where they don't. And when they don't fit together, then you ask why. Think it out. And the third way is th from your own actions. And ultimately it's from that third way that you learn your most important lessons. How to think in the long term, how to look at your actions in terms of where they come from, where they go. And when you make a mistake, you have to be willing to learn from it. Otherwise there's no way to learn from your actions. And by and large, we're pretty bad at learning from our mistakes. I don't know if you know anything about French history, but the Bourbons, those were the kings who were overthrown in the French Revolution, had their lineage restored after Napoleon. And Talleyrand, the French diplomat who had lived through the whole period, made a comment about the Bourbons one time, and they never forgot anything, he said, but they never learned anything. In other words, they remembered all their old grudges, who had wronged them, who had betrayed them, who they wanted to get back at. But they never learned from their own mistakes. And sure enough, the, the restoration didn't last very long, precisely because of that. That's a lesson you want to bear in mind. If you're going to learn from your actions, you have to be willing to admit mistakes and not throw the responsibility off on other people. You have to take responsibility for them. But at the same time, you have to be confident. You don't have to repeat the mistakes. This means you have to take a very matter-of-fact attitude toward them, because after all, as human beings, we live forward, but we understand backward. In other words, we see our past. We can't anticipate the future, but that's where we're headed. So we will make mistakes, but we can learn from them. That looking backwards is precisely what gives you some ideas of what you might want to look for as you look forward. So don't let your sense of who you are or how perfect you think you should be, or how perfect you want to be, get in the way of learning. If you want to develop a skillful sense of self as a practitioner, the attitude has to be, I'm the kind of person who's able and willing to learn. That sense of self is resilient, because it means that you can coexist with your mistakes. Otherwise, you feel that you as a person are blotted out by the mistakes, and so in order to maintain your identity, you blot the mistakes out. And you get tied up in regret about all the many years you've wasted over a mistake, because sometimes mistakes do take up lots of your life. But think about the Buddha. Six years of austerities that were a big mistake. But he didn't let the fact of the mistake get him down. He simply said, there must be another way. He kept at it. He threw away six years of his youth. He learned some lessons, but it was in the learning of the lessons, of how it was a mistake. That's why it wasn't wasted. Otherwise, those six years would have been a total waste. But his whole attitude all the way throughout his quest for awakening was there must be something skillful. He characterized his quest as the search for what is skillful. In other words, a path of action, a course of action that he could take that would lead to the deathless, that would lead to what he called the rest from the yoke. In other words, the ability to take off the burden of suffering. That's a pretty tall order. But notice the focus was on looking for what was skillful. It's a path of action that he was constantly focused on. He never thought that maybe some god would come down and save him. 
or that his own innate goodness would carry him through. And that meant when he noticed that he was not getting where he wanted to go, he had to look back on his own actions. What could he change? What was he doing wrong? And the resolve not to repeat the mistake and also to try to use his ingenuity to think of another path. Because he didn't have any guidance. Nowadays we have guidance. The path that he found works. So we're not quite in the same situation as he was. But still, we still have to learn from our own actions if we refuse to learn from our mistakes in the past refuse to admit them, or, or can't live with the idea that we made a mistake, then it's impossible to make any practice. You just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. You simply are left with what you want right now, and you forget that there's a long term that you can learn from, and a long term that you have to look forward to. There's so many times that the mistake that we made was simply because we're looking too, in too short a time span, not taking the long view. This is why the, what you might call the master narrative of Buddhism is so useful. Countless lives in the past, and potentially lots of lives in the future. And the future is very uncertain. You have to provide for the future. Think of that old fable of the grasshopper and the ant. The ant keeps working through the summer. The grasshopper says, Why are you working in the summer weather so nice? It's just time to sing and enjoy yourself. And the ant says, No, I've got to prepare for the winter. Of course, it's the ants who survive the winter. The grasshoppers all die out. So you have to think about the long term. But the long term also helps make mistakes a little bit easier to take. Don't think about how long you've been making mistake, mistakes, but think about you've got the chance in the future to make good. In other words, to act skillfully the next time that kind of situation comes around. So there is time to learn. But the best learning comes from what you've observed in this lifetime. And sometimes some habits will carry over from one, one lifetime to the next. You think about those kids in that famous experiment where they put them in a room with a little donut and said, we're going to come back in five minutes, and if the donut is still here, we'll give you another donut. But if you eat up the donut in those five minutes, you're not going to get the second donut. And some kids are able to sit there perfectly calmly, waiting for the five minutes. Others cannot. Even five minutes, they can't delay their gratification. Well, that comes from habits, either habits they learned in this lifetime or habits they carried over from the past. So for your happiness in this lifetime and for future lifetimes, try to learn some delayed gratification. realizing that the pleasures that last for a long time are much more satisfying than the ones that you get simply from going for the immediate hit. And the pleasures that come from taking into account mistakes you've made in the past, and then you learn to do something right, that's really satisfying. As the Buddha says, people were heedless in the past, but then changed to become heedful. They brighten the world, like a moon at night released from a cloud. So don't be ashamed of the fact you made mistakes, in the sense of don't let them get you down. But at the same time, don't deny them. They were mistakes, and you don't want to repeat them. You have to go back and figure out, well, how did you make that mistake to begin with? The ones that really hurt are the ones where you really knew better, but you went ahead and did them anyhow. 
to look into the mind and see what is it in the mind that goes for things that it knows are going to be harmful. What's the allure? What was it that distracted you? And then learn how to see the drawbacks of that distraction so it doesn't get you in the next time around. What this means is you've got to learn how to be mature. Buddhism is a religion for adults. Not that we have to be adult to follow it, but it's going to make us adults if we follow it. And we live in a very immature society right now. So don't let the society determine what you're going to do and say or think. Learn to think for yourself and learn from what you're doing. That's the only way out.